spread your love What if your sweetness could reach everyone There'd be no wars Birds will sing about your heart Maybe the trees will whisper the word Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope Hey y'all, Stormy here from Plant Based Storm. Um, I wanted to try something new today and tell my baby girl's birth story over food like I'm chatting with friends because I feel like I am. Um, I missed being away from the channel and I'm so glad to be back and I want to tell this story because I think that it is emotional, beautiful, and ultimately triumphant and I think it's something that we can all relate to so let's go ahead and jump right in. So as you're all fully aware, all of our lives have been affected and changed in some shape or form. Every facet of our daily interactions have been tainted with COVID and it's something that we've had to learn to deal with, something we've had to learn to work through, and something that we've had to learn to live with. And that's really where this story starts for me because you see I had a baby shower that had been planned for quite some time. The baby shower was on a Saturday and one of the main hostesses ended up testing positive for COVID that following Monday and it also happened to be one of my co-workers so of course I had to do the 10-day quarantine since I had been exposed to COVID which was a really scary time for me being so close to the end of the term of pregnancy and worried about my family my baby my husband who if you've been following me for any length of time y'all know that he has liver problems that we have to deal with so he has a weakened immune system so it was a, just a very alarming time we all quarantined and got through it but we, at the same time we had a very close family member of mine who was actually hospitalized that very weekend of my shower and that family member was my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, and he was a very, very sick. So when I quarantined from work, I ended up asking my employer if I could just stay the rest of my pregnancy term out of work and work from home. And they granted it for me because they thought that it was a reasonable request. So I did my best to avoid COVID totally. I was staying home. I was ordering groceries. I wasn't going places. And to fast forward, my brother-in-law fought a very, very hard battle, 26 days. My sister was by his side every single day. But ultimately, we lost my brother-in-law. And we lost him not long before the baby was born. And we had gotten over, my little family had gotten over that COVID scare. And we were able to move on in that way. But then we had, of course, to rally around my sister and be there for her and her kids during this very, very difficult, horrible, unimaginable time. Go on to have his memorial and then my baby girl would be born two days later, see, because I was a scheduled C-section. So we know exactly what day, what time she was going to be coming. And I went and had my blood work done the Friday because she was scheduled on a Monday. The Friday before, and of course they do a COVID testing then too. My test came back negative for that. But then suddenly on Sunday morning, my dad tested positive for COVID and we had been around him of course because we had been involved in the memorial and all of the things going on with my sister. So we decided that we better go get tested as well and one by one my husband, me, my mom, and my son got tested and we all tested positive for COVID except for my little boy. Granted my daughter was going to be born that Monday the very next day it was like the perfect storm and the worst nightmare of my life because I had been trying wholeheartedly to avoid this very situation of course I had to call my doctor's office and let them know immediately what was going on so that they could be prepared 
and help treat me, the baby, in any way that they felt could help us. So that's exactly what I did when I got the heartbreaking news that my husband was not going to be able to be there for the delivery because he also had COVID. And they don't want anyone there, understandably, that has COVID that isn't a patient. This also knocked out my mother as a candidate too since she had also tested positive. So this was a very scary and overwhelming feeling that I was having and my mother-in-law had talked to my husband and just as I had found this information out she happened to call and check on me answered the phone and as I spoke she knew something was wrong immediately and asked me what was wrong and I told her that my husband wasn't going to get to go to the birth as the tears just fell from my eyes and I know that I was going to be okay because I was able to ask my sister if she could go. She was the only one that had already had COVID, but the hard thing for her was she had to go back to the exact same hospital where she had just lost her husband. She put on a brave, brave face and did that for me, and I'll always be forever thankful for that. So we went in on Monday morning together, both of us putting on our brave faces. She with her own demons that she was fighting and me with the realization that my husband would never get to experience this with me and that this is probably our last child. So we have totally lost that experience together with her. But we went in, like I said, and she was born, and our doctor graciously allowed my husband to watch on FaceTime. So he did get to see her born. He just wasn't there. And that did make things a little bit better, although it wasn't normal. And we had this honeymoon phase where everything felt good, and we had this gorgeous baby girl that had just joined our world and our life, and things were good. But... There's always that caveat, right? My sister was with me for 24 hours until I could walk whenever they allowed me to get up. And then I asked her to go home because she had had COVID like two and a half months prior. And she was still at risk of being able to contract it. And there was no reason for her to continue to put herself in harm's way. So she reluctantly left. I pretty much had to make her leave. And once she left, then... Our sweet baby girl tested positive for COVID too, just barely 24 hours old. And I also had gestational diabetes at the end of my tri my third trimester. So even though my blood sugars had been very well controlled, she still ended up having to go to the NIC unit. This was because her pancreas was used to putting out a little bit more insulin and it didn't need to do that anymore and her blood sugars were getting too low so they had to regulate her blood sugars she was gone for about 24 hours and then she came back to me it was a very hard thing to do because I could only visit her through an iPad since I had COVID I couldn't go to the NIC unit we finally made it through all of our obstacles hurdles and hoops and we were reunited with daddy and he finally met his baby girl and we have been rocking on ever since. I hope that you enjoyed this story and this recipe. And as always, thanks so much for watching. <laughs>